Told DC. I'm Officer Matthew, and to my right, Officer Mendel, and to my left, Soldier Daniel. So today's do- topic is Apostolic Pentecostal doctrines of devils. Mm. So before we get into the topic, let's open up with John eight and thirty two. The Book of John, chapter eight and verse thirty two. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans make up the 12 tribes of Israel, and you must repent and keep the commandments for the pending day of destruction. Let's go ahead and go to Matthew 3. So we're going to cast down the doctrine, this baptism doctrine that we always hear in the Baptist church and all this other food. Oh, we're going to go. Oh, yeah. Let's get the article real quick. Let's get the article. We're going to cover the the belief of Pentecostal. Yeah, the one that's Pentecostalism. One is Pentecostalism. Uh, let's That's see. That's out of Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah out of Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Out of Wikipedia. Wikipedia. The movement first emerged in America around 1914. Around when? Around 1914. Uh huh. As a result of doctrinal disputes within the nascent Pentecostal movement and claims an esteemed 24 million adherents today. Mm. One is Pentecostalism derives its distinctive name from the teaching on the Godhead. The what? On the Godhead. That's the, the Holy Trinity. Which is popularly referred to as the oneness doctrine. This doctrine states that there is one God, a singular divine spirit who manifests himself in many ways, mm. including as a father, son, and holy ghost, a.k.a. Holy Spirit. So we're going to show that that's a Babylonian custom that they hold on to. So we're going to touch on these many doctrines. We're going to open up here with the baptism. Let's go ahead and get right to it because we're going over baptism, holy, what is it, baptism, speaking in tongues. And- yeah. Speaking in tongues right. and, um, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. The book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, mm-hmm. saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a lanthorn girdle around his loins, mm-hmm. and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out him Jerusalem. In all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, verse six, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. They were doing what? Confessing their sins. So they wasn't just dipping in the water; they was confessing their sins. Now let's get what sin in. So we're gonna go to First John three and four. So they wasn't just dipping brothers and sisters in the water; they was confessing their sins. I said to tell you to do in the book of James: confess your uh, what false one, one, one to, to another. another. One to another. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So sin is breaking of God's laws. For sin is the transgression of the law. So without the law, you couldn't have sin. So that foolish doctrine that uh, the law is done away with, you're saying sin is done away with. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's foolishness. That's anarchy. So let's go ahead and go to John, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Mm. Through Jesus, though Jesus himself baptized not. Hold up, what? Though Jesus himself baptized not, Mm. but his disciples. Okay. So now let's go. Jesus Christ didn't baptize nobody but the disciples there. We're going to find out what Christ was baptizing the brothers and the sisters with. Let's let's go ahead and go to Mark uh, 1 and 8. Because we got a lot to cover, so we kind of going to speed through it. So bear with us. Get your pens and papers and take copious notes. The book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 8. 
I indeed have baptized you with water. Mm-hmm. That's talking. That's John. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to see if the Holy Ghost is what we've grown up to here in the church. But we can, before we get that, we're going to run a video. Baptism gone wild. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Kev on stage. And um, let's just say this guy's pretty, pretty, pretty excited to be baptized. That ain't nothing but a bunch of foolishness. Go back to that Mark 1 and 8. But you know, something before you get that, that's what they call the Holy Ghost. Though. Right. Right. We're going to read about that. The book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with water. So John was baptizing people with water. But he shall baptize you with the Holy but Ghost. Christ is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Let's see. Let's go to uh, John uh, 15 and 3. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word. Which I have spoken unto you. You are clean through what? Through the word mm. which I have spoken unto you. So that's what Christ is baptizing with. And we're going to further dive into this topic. So we're going to get Ephesians 5 and 26. Because you're never going to find no count of no brother getting baptized and doing no foolish mess like that in the scriptures. I challenge you to find that garbage in the scriptures. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water. With the washing of water. By the word. By the what? By the word. Now by the pool. By the word. There you go. That's what John was talking about. He's going to baptize you with the word. Now let's roll this, uh, let's roll this video of uh, baptism gone wrong. So we got a lot of foolish videos. <laughs> That mess is ridiculous, man. Let's go ahead and, and, and press on. Let's get First Corinthians ten. The book two. of First Corinthians, chapter ten, verse two. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud in the sea. You don't read any scripture about Moses baptizing any Israelites. What did Moses do with the Israelites when he was in the wilderness? He gave them the law. So let's press on. Let's go to First Peter 3 and 21. The book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure where unto even baptism doth also now save us, mm -hmm. not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Hold on. That's going into getting dipped in the water. It says not doing what? Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So that's telling you that that baptism that we've grown up with, that tradition, that's not the baptism that the scriptures is talking about. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. Of the what? But 
the answer of a good conscience towards God. How do you get a good conscience toward God? You get it through keeping the laws and the commandments. Let's go to Jeremiah. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Let's go to Jeremiah 2 and 22 to further show the point that washing yourself does not cleanse you of your sins. Physically washing yourself. You have to wash yourself in the laws of God. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 22. For though thou wash thee with nitre mm -hmm. and take thee much soap. And take thee much soap. Yet thine iniquity is marked before me. But the sin the is Lord. still there. Saith who? Saith the Lord God. Mm. Now go to Psalms 119 and uh, what is that? Nine. Psalms 119 and 9. Let's see how, how a young man or woman shall cleanse his ways or himself. I just want to say this too. Also, we're not saying there's anything wrong with being baptized. Right. 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 We're saying that the baptism itself, if you're not going to keep the commandments, it's not going to change you. You can go in a wet homosexual. You're gonna I come mean, out, come out of go, uh, go, go in, in a dry. dry come out uh, wet. Yeah, come out wet. So it, 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 that's not what's going to change you. It's right. keeping these laws. Is that's right, because the laws convert you. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to that word. By doing what? By taking heed thereunto according to that word. So that's how you cleanse yourself. That's the baptism. That's the spiritual baptism that you get. Dipping yourself in the water is not going to profit any if you don't want to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. So that's, that baptism just symbolic. The real baptism is getting your mind right according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. So let's go ahead and press on. Let's get on. Um, now we're going to go into this Holy Trinity doctrine. Let's get this in Matthew 17. Because this is a cold cutter for this. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, mm -hmm. and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. Mm. And his face did shine as the sun, as his raiment as was white as the light. And behold, three appeared unto Moses and Elias, taken with him then answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here mm -hmm. if thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles one for thee one for moses and one for elias so peter asked christ this is good to be here let us make a tabernacle for moses which represents the law isaiah which represents the prophet and christ which represents the new covenant while he yet spake so while he was speaking behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son. Hold on, I said, this is me. This is my beloved son. Uh-huh. In whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And that's also letting you know Christ overrides everything. So the, the Most High said, this is my beloved son. If they all one and the same, why would he send a, a, a chariot to tell... To talk and say, look, right. this is my son. Well, he would have said, this is me. Hear me. Listen to me. <laughs> that's some foolish garbage that's being taught in the church. And we're going to show you that that mess, the roots of it is all Babylon, all satanic. Mm -hmm. So let's continue with that. Let's go to Matthew 19, 16 and 17. The book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Because that's the question all of us brothers and sisters need to be asking. Well, what do I need to do to get the kingdom of heaven? Let's see what Christ said. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So Christ's like, why are you calling me good? There is none good but one. Uh-huh. That is God. No, that is me. That is God. That is we. That is God. Uh-huh. But if thou wilt enter into life. But if you want to get the kingdom of heaven. Keep the commandments. The law is done away with. Keep the commandments. There you go. That kills the doctrine that the law is done away with. I mean, that's Christ himself saying, if you don't keep the laws, you're not making a kingdom. It's that simple. I don't understand that. But then under the same Pentecostal doctrine, they don't even keep the Sabbath. Exactly. So that's showing you right there the day off. I mean, that's that's a commandment. That's the fourth commandment. And they collecting tithes. Right. Yeah. But that's the law is done away with, though. Yeah. That's some backward stuff, man. But let's go to uh, let's continue on with this topic. Let's go to Mark 1 and 11. The book of St. Mark, chapter 1, verse 11. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, was God insane or something? Were he was just talking to himself in the third person? Because <laughs> I'm just not getting this doctrine, man, because this is pretty clear right here that, you know, the Most High is speaking to his son. Right. So I don't understand how they could be one and the same. Why would you need to speak to yourself? Man, get, let's get, get First Corinthians for him, 11. Oh, yeah, First Corinthians 11. Let's get that. Yeah, let's get that. This is another. This is going to oh, show yeah, you the that, order. That's not on here. No, nah, we nah, but we gonna put it in there though, just in case somebody get the dumb thought that we making up some stuff. Let's see the order of the Most High. The Book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse three. 
But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Not wow. himself. Is God. Man, that's a straight cutter right there. I mean, we're just going to keep it moving, though. We're going to go to uh, Acts 7, 54 and 50 through 56. Let's see if they all the same. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast, steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Hold up. Wow. So this so, is going into Stephen when he was getting persecuted. Now he and he had a vision. He saw a God and Christ standing next to each other. Right. And then he cut him with the scriptures. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now read verse 57. Show these wicked pastors or Pharisees dead. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. They did what? And stopped their ears. They said, We're not trying to hear that law. Just and, like a lot of Christians do today. That's why they're still sucking on pork chops in your churches today. And ran upon him with one accord. And they ran up on him. Because the many people don't want to hear these this Bible, especially these pastors. And that's in, what's that, Ezekiel 13 talking yeah, about Ezekiel that? Ezekiel 13, ain't no, ain't no salvation for your wicked pastor. All right, that's, that's scripture. Just straight, tell you straight out. Um, go to Daniel 7 uh, and 9. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So this is talking about the Most High God, the Ancient of Days. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Mm. So he had on a garment, and he's got hair on his head, so he's not a puff of smoke like uh, they teach y'all. Right. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Okay, keep going. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. Okay, so just jump down to 13. Let's get to the point. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man come, with, come with the clouds of heaven. And came to the ancient of days. Came to God. Hold up, what? He did what? And came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Wow. So that's right there. Why would God bring himself to himself? That don't that, make any sense. That's just that don't that's just foolishness. God in the author of confusion, man. That doctrine doesn't stand up in light of the scriptures. That's a wicked doctrine, a Babylonian doctrine at that. So for, so far, just to recap, we went through the baptism. Like I said, we're not saying there's anything wrong with doing a water baptism, but that's not what's going to get you the kingdom. Getting you the kingdom is talking about cleansing you with the word, keeping right. the commandments. Right. right. So the water baptism is symbolic, just right. like what uh, John the Baptist was saying. And then we also uh, covered the Trinity, which is so many scriptures that debunk that. Right. Now we're going to go into this, the Holy Ghost. And we're going to get an example of that woman under the Holy Ghost. There's a video showing you what they say the Holy Ghost is. We're going to see if this matches the scriptures. <laughs> Man, our people, they need help, man. That that, that jump was crazy. You're right not there. finding that in the scriptures. That's you, demonic activity. Oh, yeah, actually, actually. You will, you will find, find it. We're going to read it, yeah, it, right now. Read it now. Yeah, we We're going to read about that, right? We, just what you saw is in the scriptures. Let's read it. Mark 9. The book of Mark 9, chapter uh, the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 20. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground. He did what? And he fell on the ground. Just like what we just saw. And a wig popped off. And wallowed foaming. Okay. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? So since the Holy Ghost came unto him. Is that what they're talking about? Let's see. And he said of a child. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Wow. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Let's see if Christ said this was the Holy Ghost. 
And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. No, he rebuked the Holy Spirit. He rebuked the foul spirit. It was a foul spirit. That's and that's what, what we just, just seen. A foul spirit. That was not the Holy Ghost. You will not read nothing on in the, in the scriptures with anybody catching the Holy Ghost rolling around on the floor with their wig Ooh. falling off. <laughs> right. And before that, <laughs> babbling around in the church yeah. with a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Saying unto him. Thou dumb and deaf spirit. What is what kind of spirit is that? Thou dumb and deaf spirit. Uh huh. I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. So Christ called it a foul, dumb, and deaf spirit. And we're gonna show you where we learned that from. We're gonna cover the history on that. We're gonna start. We're going this. straight into the history. We're gonna go to uh the video. Goodbye, Uncle Tom. We're just gonna it's gonna tell you in the video. Listen carefully where they got this garbage from. <laughs> Listen to this, I'm, I'm quoting you it. When work is finished, the slaves are allowed to congregate and perform religious rites which are merely a primitive African version of Christianity. Experience shows that the more religious a slave is, the more humble, resigned, and docile he is. However, the law prescribes that these devotions shall be monitored by a white man. And there he is. This elemental parody of the master's religion, Jesus, the gospel, the Bible are all mixed together. They said the master's religion. Yeah. They also say it came from Africa. And it came from Africa. We're going to show you that. It's shamanism. We're going to prove it. They believe it. All right. Let's go to uh, Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 13. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai mm -hmm. and spakest with them from heaven. And gave us them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. Okay, so this is going into Moses, how he came down off the mountain and he gave him the commandments and the laws. Right. And made us known unto them that holy Sabbath and commandments them precepts, statutes and laws by the hand of Moses that servant. See, that, that covers it right there. That's talking about Moses bringing down the laws. Right. Bringing down the good statutes and the commandments. That's what he brought down. So how, what is this, how does this tie into the Holy Spirit? We're about to find right. out. Right. And to go back to show you that Moses wasn't baptizing people, dipping them in the, in the Red Sea or right. anything like that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. They did what? But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. And he fought against them. Which we covered many times on this show. We rebelled against the laws and he fought against us. When you read that in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, the curses. That's how the most high fought against us. So my brother just really gave it away. <laughs> oh. Uh, now nah, you good though. They're telling you that the Holy Spirit is the laws. We're going to prove it. As right. Read exactly. Y'all going to figure it out. Yeah. Y'all mm -hmm. going to figure it out. It's, th it's talking about the laws. There's nowhere in the scriptures where you read that the Holy Spirit is talking about people rolling around on the floor and shouting. <laughs> And wigs popping off. Read yeah. the next verse for him. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 11. When he, then he remembered the days of old, Moses, and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd and his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Mm. Holy Spirit. Talking about the laws. And we, now you, you might not believe it, but you're going to see right. as we read on. Let's go to uh, Matthew 3 and 11. I said, where is he? And with the he is key in this one. That's what that's what the uh, Isaiah uh, the prophet was talking about. Who is the he that will that will bring us back to remembrance? The book of Matthew chapter three verse eleven. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, mm. but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost mm. and with fire. There you go. That's the he. And we already covered what Christ was baptized. Well, read the top of that again real quick. My fault. Read that because this is key right here. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Unto what? Unto repentance. So repentance, acknowledging your sins and forsaking them. So that's just going back and they was confessing their sins one to another. They wasn't saying we under grace, but we're going to keep being homosexuals and right. homongers. What no brother jumping up on the tambourine shaking his butt? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, <clears throat> let's go to John. Uh, 14 and 15 Yeah let's get that The book of John chapter 14 verse 15 If ye love me 
keep my commandments. So this is Christ. He's saying if you love him, because I hear a lot of people say they love Jesus, but they don't keep no commandments. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Okay. And I will pray the Father. So after you keep the commandments, he will pray to the Father. So right. that's telling you that you got to do something first before he prays to the Father, which is keeping the commandments. It didn't say he's going to pray to himself either. Exactly. That's another cut. Good point. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Okay, so let's jump to 26 to find out what the comforter is and what the comforter is going to do. Verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. So the comforter, which he will, which the Holy Ghost, the Father will send, telling you that's that that's the separation of Christ and the Father. Right. And remember, in order for all this to happen, you got to keep the commandments. So these people that are sitting in the church is talking about they got the Holy Ghost and they ain't keeping one commandment. They liars, according to the scriptures. He shall teach you all things. He'll do what? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance like whatsoever re I have said unto you. Like y'all remembering that y'all Israelites, that exactly. you got to come back to keeping the laws and the faith of Christ. Just what we read in Isaiah 63, going into that he. That's talking about Christ. Right. Yep. What we got right. next? Let's go to uh yeah, What we got on here? Yeah, to get that song 51. 51. Yeah. So we're going to cover this because this is a topic that many of our people confuse as sitting in these churches, not learning anything. They talk about the Holy Ghost. They pull out one scripture. It's just a bunch of people jumping around, hopping and foaming at the mouth. We just read that's demonic activity according to the scriptures. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a what? A clean heart. We already read what cleanses your heart or your mind. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from that presence and take that holy and take not that holy spirit from me. Oh, wow. That's heavy. right? That's there. heavy. We're going to see what that is. Matter of fact, let's get that in wisdom. Of, oh, yeah. oh, we won't get that. Yeah, we won't get that. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Yeah, so bring that out. Yeah, we're going to cover that. I said, take not that holy spirit from me because the, the holy spirit will flee and we're going to see what it flees from. The book of wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, verse 5. For the Holy Spirit of discipline. What is the Holy Spirit called? For the Holy Spirit of discipline. That's why they were called disciples, disciplined students. Keeping the laws. Going back to keeping the laws. Exactly. Again. In order to be disciplined, you got to have a regimen that you discipline too. And, and let me make this clear because a lot of foolish Christians will say, well, we can't keep the laws. And, uh, you know, like we got to still sacrifice. We're not saying that you still got to exactly. sacrifice. We're saying you got to keep all the laws except for the sacrificial laws. And the law of tithing. And the law of tithing because Christ did away with the Levitical priesthood. He period. replaced that. Right. right. But the rest of the laws still stand, including y'all eating swine and all those other Because it's judgments things. for all them things that you're doing that you are unaware of. For women wearing pants, men wearing dresses, they got transgender, transgender bathrooms going to be in the churches soon. Believe that. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding so the and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. There you go. That's what that was talking about in Psalms 51. If you're in the midst of wickedness, the Holy Spirit of uh, discipline will flee deceit mm. and withdraw itself from thoughts uh, without understanding. So now let's get uh, Acts 7. Um, 51. And, uh, 51, yeah. Let's get it. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. So let me read this, because Stephen was tearing these Pharisees up. It said, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did. I'm going to go back to Isaiah 63 and 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and fought against them. That's the prophecy that he was making reference to. Because we always rebel. All right, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 51. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and is. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Yeah, yeah. 50, verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. What did they receive again? Just that may have slid straight over somebody's head. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. They said who have received the law, not falling down on the ground and rolling around. Yeah, not, not doing that. So 
we're going to go into, uh, we're going to keep it, just show another video on the Holy Ghost, and we're going to tie this into right. shamanism. We're going to show you that it's, 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 it's witchcraft. It's a, it's a Hamite uh, uh, traditional belief. or, or uh, We're going to show you. It's going to be crystal clear. Exactly. Go to the video, Holy Ghost Shout, and we're going to get some of this right here. This is in there catching the Holy Ghost around there, stomping around mooning people. As we read before, that's the devil. We read that right out of the script. And they got the people in there. They got the elder sisters in there with tight pants on, chasing behind her to pull her daggone pants up. That's foolishness right there that you just witnessed. But that happens in all your churches. All right, we're going to get this article here on yeah. uh, Glos uh, Glossolalia. Glossolalia. Yeah. This yeah. is going into speaking in tongues, the origins of that. Uh. The article is entitled Gloss Alalia. Uh, get it off Wikipedia? Yeah, yeah, Wikipedia. Gloss Alalia, or speaking in tongues, according to linguists, is the fluid vocaliz vocalizing of speech like syllables that lack any readily comprehending meaning. Meaning it's all confusion and garbage. Garbage. Gibberish. In some cases, as part of religious practice, which which it is believed to be a divine language. It's believed to be a what? A divine language. Believed to be a divine language. Unknown to the speaker. Unknown to the speaker. Even the person coming out of his mouth don't know what that foolish garbage is. The term derives from glossolalia, a Greek phrase used in the New Testament meaning speak in, with, or by tongues. The related term... Oh, that's Hold on, no. Up. Read right, right there. Read what it's really saying, i.e. what that's talking I.e. other languages. I.e. what? I.e. other languages. As we're going to show you in the book of Acts. Other language, not a bunch of mumbo-jumbo foolishness. That's in Acts 2. The related term, xenolia, is used to describe the phenomenon when the language was being spoken in its natural language. Previously unknown to the speaker, glossolalia is practiced in Pentecostal and charismatic Christianity, as well as other religions. And we're going to touch on the other religions. Now, keep reading. You got to yeah. go to the back. Go yeah, to flip, page, yeah. yeah, flip to that. Don't skip that. Uh, yeah, we need that, that right there. Uh, this article is entitled History, Classical Antiquity. It is a commonplace idea within the Greco-Roman world that divine beings spoke languages different from, uh, different from human languages. According to Dale B. Martin, Glossolalia, according to high status in the ancient world, due to its association with the divine. Alexander may have exhibited glossolalia during his episodes of prophetic ecstasy. Neoplatonist Neo Platonist philosopher linked glossolalia to prophecy, writing that prophecy was divine spirit possession that emits words which are not understood by those that other them. Witchcraft, in other words. That's exactly. all that is. For they pronounce them, as it is said, with an insane mouth. With a what? An insane mouth. Showing you that that's madness. And are wholly subservient. And entirely yield themselves to the energy of the predominating God, which is the devil. Keep going, nah, because it's gonna tell you where the foundation of that. Exactly. Just keep going. 
Because that's all that's showing. That ain't nothing but confusion. Because you take them people and that church is shouting around and put them on the streets doing that garbage, they would be in the nut house doing that mess. During the 20th century, glossolalia would primarily become associated with Pentecostalism and later during charismatic movement. They'll be associated with what? With later with Pentecostalism and later charismatic movement. Mm. The holiness preachers, Charles Parham and William Seymour, are credited as the co-found, co-founders of the movement. It was Parham who formulated the doctrine of initial evidence. After studying the Bible, Parham came to the conclusion that speaking in tongues was the Bible evidence that had once received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. All lies. In 1900, Parham opened Bethel Bible College in Topeka, Kansas, where he taught initial evidence. During a service on January 1st, 1901, a student named Agnes Osmond asked for prayer in the laying of their hands to, spe- to specifically ask God to fill her with the Holy Spirit. Mm. She became the first of many students to experience glossolalia. Coincidentally, in the first hours of the 20th century, Parham followed within the next few days. Parham called his new movement the apostolic faith. And the apostolic faith. Apostolic faith, excuse me. So that's showing you that that's new in the churches. Exactly, and that's an Edomite. In 1905, he moved to Houston and opened a Bible school there. One of his students was William Seymour, an African-American preacher. In 1906, Seymour traveled to Los Angeles where his preaching ignited the Azusa Street Revival. So he had a good coon with him. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's how he taught himself a good one. This revival is considered the birth of the global Pentecostal movement. There you go. Witnesses of the Azusa Street Revival wrote of seeing fire resting on the heads of participants, miraculous healings in the meetings, and incidents of speaking in tongues being understood by native speakers of the language. According to the first issue of William Seymour newsletter, The Apostolic Faith. From 1906. All right, now get the history because that was modern history. Now keep going. Yeah, you got to go to that next page. Yeah, because that that's the modern history. That's showing you that back to the origins. That's new in the earth, which is all madness. What's new to the church, but it's been around. Yeah, that 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 right there. Now here we go. That's what we want right here to show you where that came from. Non-Christian practice. Other religious groups have been observed to practice some of the form of what's that? Theopneusic. Glossolalia. It is perhaps most commonly in paganism. And where? In and what? paganism. Paganism. The whole religion is pagan. The holidays, the worship day, the symbols, including the cross, and the now, fish, the fish, and now we the speaking in tongues is telling you it is rooted in paganism. And what else? Most commonly in paganism, shamanism, and shamanism, what? shamanism, and other mediumistic religious practices. Meaning Which channeling one? devils or demons, witchcraft. That's what we saw. We saw the lady channel the demon. She was flopping all around. The, the old lady laid out on the ground with a wig f- falling off. The only account uh, in the scriptures that we read of anybody doing anything like that, they was possessed with a devil. A and we spirit. just reading that right here. That's telling you the histories of that mess. That's that foul, dumb, and deaf spirit. You can't read anybody falling out on the ground with the Holy Ghost in the Bible anywhere. And uttering a bunch of madness. God is not the author of confusion. You see people jumping up and down inside a church. Like I said, if them people was out in the street, you would think they were smoking K2 or Mojo. Hey, just get a little bit on that shaman right there. Just read that little Yeah, read bit right that there. shamanism for them, just in case they don't believe that. Shamanism is a practice that involves a practitioner reaching altered states of consciousness in order to perceive and interact with the spirit world and, uh-huh. and channel these trans- transcendental energies into this world. A shaman is a person regarded as having access to and influence in the world of benevolent and malevolent spirits who typically enter into a trans state during a ritual mm. and practices divination and healing. Mm. So we're going to see so, what that so trans... So the healing that, 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 that they got from the apostles or whatever that they claim they got, the shamans get the same thing. Right. From demonic spirits. So that's showing you right there. We're going to run the commercial, the 12 Tries commercial real quick, and then we're going to come right back.
gonna get back into speaking in tongues. We're mm-hmm. gonna go with uh, Mark sixteen and seventeen. The book of Mark, chapter sixteen, verse seventeen. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Mm. They speak with new tongues. It says they shall speak with new tongues. So that's right. going into the prophecies that's going to happen here in Acts. We're going to exactly. get that real quick. So this is this is Christ talking uh, prophecy here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're going to go to Acts 2. <clears throat> the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They did what? Every man heard him speak in his own language. Now they was out there babbling like yeah, we've seen there. in the video. Bop, 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 bop. Can I nah. read again from uh, verse 4? Yeah, read it from verse, yeah, four. Read it from verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost mm. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now with this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they heard every man speak in his own language. So that's showing you that speaking in tongues, they were speaking other languages that people could understand. Exactly. It wasn't gibberish. They said it was uh, Jerusalem uh, Jews, devout men out of every nation under, because it was Israelites coming from all over because they had to keep the Feast of Pentecost. They had to come up to Jerusalem. Then if you read down a little bit further, it tells you mm-hmm. all the places that you came. Yeah, let's get to la- some of these languages. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Say, so, hold on. These brothers only know Hebrew. What are these brothers doing communicating my language? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? That's clear. They wasn't up there mumbling around. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea. Cappadocia and Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in parts of Libya around Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. There you go. They were hearing men from all these different countries speaking their languages that they could understand. That was the speaking in the tongues. That's Mm -hmm. what Christ prophesied about in Mark 16, 17. Now, we're going to roll something here real quick on... uh, we're going to show you that these these people are actually uh, witch doctors and, and witches, but they look exactly like a Sunday church. We're going to show you. It's called uh, the Spirit of Ketu, and it's all witchcraft, but we're going to show you it's just a Sunday church. That's what it looked like. Eight PM in Majengo Kavalula area on the outskirts of Kitui, a rather unusual congregation at Mamanzuki's place, the lead witch doctor here. More than ten of her counterparts met here in a special ceremony to appease their spirits together with those possessed. A special dance is conducted all through the night with special attire showcased by the participants. each one depicting the nature of that particular spirit that has possessed them. The concept of spiritual possession is familiar in many religions, but the way to treat them varies. In many traditional beliefs, these spirits have to be appeased every now and then, but religiously, that is not recommended. Religious leaders argue that humans should not give in to their demands, otherwise they forever will be living under their control. Common features of possession include involuntary and censored behavior and an extra-human, extra-social aspect to the individual's actions. And some of the symptoms were exhibited here by those possessed. Some started acting weird, with others speaking in tongues. This lady, Amkamba, is hard speaking in another language. Hello. 
Some who are possessed by Maasai spirits exhibited what the Maasai do traditionally. And this was the trend all night with those possessed dancing to the rhythms of Kilome as wished and demanded by the spirits. Harit Salim, NTV. We just seen that clip earlier. That looked just like a church to me. That mess looks so stupid. And then you saw, uh, they said he was channeling spirits, speaking in tongues. Right. Mm -hmm. Same God. That's what the narrator says. So that's proof that this stuff is all based in witchcraft, paganism, and shamanism. Witchcraft, I don't know if people knew, is an abomination unto the Lord. You was getting right. killed for that. Yeah, under the law of Moses, you was getting put to death for that madness. What we got? Yeah, let's go ahead and go to Acts 10 and 44, man. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentile also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which I received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. All right. Yeah, I think you're gonna get that. yeah, so that's going into that Holy Ghost, that baptism. Going into the word. They were speaking in tongues, the other tongues, because the apostles were sent to deal with the northern kingdom. When you actually read the history, it was a split between the kingdom. The southern kingdom, which consisted of the Jews, and the northern kingdom, which was called Israel. So they spoke Greek, Latin, and so forth. So when the apostles came up in there, and the Holy Spirit found they was able to communicate with them either in Greek or in Latin. That's what that's talking about, as we read in Acts 2. Not that foolishness that we just seen on the video, was they was mumbling something nobody. How in the world somebody, you edifying a brother or sister, and you in here mumbling a bunch of stuff, how they going to be like, man, this brother is dropping knowledge? Right. They don't even know what you're saying. That don't even make no saying. sense. They don't, even, they don't even know what you're saying. This brother, so blah, 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 blah. this brother sitting there, this brother deep. Like, yeah. nah, it Seriously, don't work that like that. So that's just further proof that they were able to hear in, other, in their language. Exactly. People that spoke other languages, they were able to understand what they were saying in their own language. That's exactly. what they're going to. Because it says, when you read 45, read the top of 45 again. Just prove what we just the said. Book of Acts chapter 10, verse 45. And they of the circumcision, which believed were, as a, were astonished. Because of the circumcision, they spoke Hebrew. That was the southern kingdom. When they seen them, they seen the apostles speaking in another tongue. Or uh, Peter, for example, they were astonished. Because they know the brother only spoke Hebrew. And he was edifying the brothers, the northern kingdom, with the scriptures in their tongue, not the Bible that we just seen uh, from the Hamites. As many as come with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. There you go. That's crystal clear. That's not talking about somebody babbling and falling out and rolling around on the floor. So we'll be going. That we next video. Yeah, let's get this speaking, speaking in, tongues. in tongues. We got to get this because this is Match garbage. Right up with the uh, other man as we saw. Exactly. <laughs> When y'all seen that lady get touched uh, by that pastor or preacher, and he she she does the exact same movements that one hamelic lady did, <laughs> bending right. over backwards, looking demonic as hell. That's all that was, and the then you could tell it was all foolishness because the brother had to touch the sister to activate her to act a damn fool, to activate because, that demon. Because she couldn't understand <laughs> nothing that his foolish exactly. butt was saying. Exactly. He had to he transfer the mumbling. demon into it. That's why he had to touch her. That's why he had to touch her because she would just been sitting there standing, looking dumb as hell, Calling listening that garbage. <laughs> Our people, man. <laughs> they need help, man. We got to come out of these false religions. It's God, but you right see what's going to our people, man. It's, it's yeah, God, let's get this in First, uh, first Corinthians, man. Because that, that right there is, is total wickedness, man. Acts 19. Slave doctrine going to get people killed, man. 
Acts 19. Oh, you were Acts? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's get Acts 19. My fault. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 6. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They spake with tongues, other languages, and prophesied. You're not prophesying. Shabalabalab. Nobody. Who you I'm prophesying to with that dumb video we just seen? Who would have actually walked in that church and been edified and said, you know what? I need to stop smoking. I feel closer to the Lord I need to now. stop selling drugs. I yeah. need to marry the sister. My friend you didn't on. get any of that from that garbage that was going on, and that was just all stupidity. They would have got a straight jacket for real. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. doing that on the street, your ass is getting locked or up. Shat. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> get that. Let's get the first Corinthians twelve. Yeah, roll. First Corinthians. That's stupid. Way down. The book of First Corinthians, chapter twelve, verse twenty-eight. <clears throat> and God has set in the church first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After the miracles, then the gifts of healing helps governments, div diversities of tongues. Meaning brothers that can speak other languages to the Israelites that are coming from various parts. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? So uh, not everybody is one thing because you need a diverse group of brothers with a diverse set of skills. To be able to reach people. To be able to reach people. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Exactly. So that's letting you know what that's talking about. Speaking with other tongues, other language. You're not, again, you're not edifying nobody doing a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. The, book of, roll through this. the yeah. book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 5. I would, I would that ye all speak with tongues. Other languages to edify the sisters in various countries that's been scattered through the slave trade. But rather that ye <coughs> prophesy. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues. So <clears throat> greater is he that edify the people than just speak with tongues. Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Except he do what? Except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. That also cutting that Hebrew doctrine. Because if we up here edifying y'all in Hebrew, we just gonna be talking to one another here on the set. Exactly. That, not only that, that just it just says right there to interpret. Like exactly. if you go to China, you trying to speak to a Chinese you have to have man. An interpreter. You gotta have an interpreter. Like, that, when, like when Columbus came here, he had a Hebrew interpreter because exactly. the people were here spoke Hebrew. That's crystal clear. Verse six. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues. What shall I profit you? So Peter, uh, Paul come up here speaking Hebrew. What profit is to us? He coming in here right now speaking Hebrew. What we not gonna understand what he's saying? Right. What shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. There you go. Even these things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except <clears throat> they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall it be known what is piped or harped? Exactly. If there's a and meaning, you got to have a difference, meaning that it's got to be something common for us to hear what's being said. Because if somebody come in here speaking Chinese, in other words, all going to sound the same because I don't know. I don't, I don't speak know. Chinese. Exactly. exactly. I don't speak Spanish. So it's all going to sound the same to me. That's why we got to speak in the common tongue. Verse eight. For if he trumpet, if, for if the trumpet given a certain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Exactly. So. The man blowing a trumpet ready for war, he blow a, a, a sound that's, you know, not I'm the familiar, battle call. Yeah. They not going to arm up and take arms. Right. Yeah, Verse that. 9. So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. What? So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. Words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? For the ye shall speak into the air. So that, all that gibberish is you saying you're just wasting your air. You're not edifying you're anybody. anybody. That's all edified. them videos we seen. Right. But um, Paul continues on all the way through verse 30. But we got to get ready to wrap it up. So um, we hope that that was edifying and right. that we cast down more lives of that with the, the Holy Trinity speaking, in, speaking tongues in tongues and baptism. And baptism. And also the Holy Ghost was up in there. Yeah. I'll praise the most high. So with that, we say shalom. 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 Most high, Most high Christ, Christ bless. Christ bless. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. What's that? The spirit of the Most High God. The commandments of the Most High God. The Bible says from Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's what? No lying or selling. That's the Sabbath day. We keep that. The Bible commands.
reminds us that we wear fringes. That's what you see in all the brothers. We keep that. And that's why we're here, to teach our people that. That's the answer. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.